Let's go ahead and get it kicked off. Thanks for taking the time to uh, come to my tutorial session, a mad scientist guide to automating CNI with generative AI. Uh, my name is Doug Smith. I work at Red Hat and I am heavily involved in the CNI community, so the container networking interface. Um, and I had come up with a bit of a science experiment that I wanted to, uh, to share with you all that you're welcome to um, participate in. Um, and I am very excited to, to share this with you. Uh, so without much ado, let's get right into the agenda, um, which I'm going to start off by getting kind of a show of hands. It'll help me sort of uh, have a litmus test for how deep I might go into this stuff. So first question is, uh, who's coming to KubeCon for the first time? All right, awesome, good. Welcome to KubeCon and psyched that you came. Thanks for choosing my session for sure. How about anyone who's used some kind of generative AI for text like ChatGPT, Gemini, Copilot? All right, good, awesome. Sweet tool, use it wisely or use it in a crazy fashion like a mad scientist, which is what we'll do today. Um, so I'm going to guess that a lot of you know what an LLM is, show of hands. Cool, yeah, it's a large language model, which is uh, generative artificial intelligence for um, generating text. So, okay, Kubernetes experience. You don't really need to have much. Um, who's used KubeCuddle before? Okay, awesome, lots of people, excellent. Uh, honestly, uh, you kind of don't even know how, have to know how to use it. Um, there should be a lot of uh, copy and paste, but if you can use KubeCuddle, you're in really good shape for this, uh, for this tutorial. Uh, who uses Kind, show of hands? Okay, good number, cool. So we're gonna use Kind before, it's Kuber, um, we're gonna use Kind today. Uh, that's Kubernetes in Docker, um, which is kind of a handy dandy way to run, run Kubernetes. And who knows what CNI is? Okay, good, awesome, all right. So yeah, good number of people. So CNI is uh, the container networking interface. It's an API that's sort of uh, like lingua franca for getting your networking components to speak to Kubernetes. It's actually its own API, so it is not the Kubernetes API, um, which is a little bit um, different. Has anyone actually written a CNI configuration before, show of hands? Okay, just a couple, cool. Well, you're gonna get a robot to do it um, for you, but if you've written one before, um, you're super ahead of the game. Um, awesome, thank you. So yeah, today it's a tutorial. So I'm gonna try to keep um, my blabbing to a little bit of a minimum. I'm thinking maybe 15, 20 minutes for a bit of um, some background information, some contextual information about what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna get in on a hands-on workshop. I'll talk a little bit more about the requirements. Uh, some of the requirements are a little bit of a choose your own adventure, so um, I'll get into that more. And there's also a couple um, risks slash possible rewards, one of which is conference Wi-Fi is always totally a gamble. I don't think it's gonna be uh, super bandwidth intensive, but you will have to download a few a few things. Um, I was able to update my Chrome browser yesterday on this Wi-Fi, and I'm like, oh, that's a pretty good test. Um, so we'll see. Depending on how quick we get through it, uh, we can uh, have some like follow-up questions, discussions, if anyone wants to look into like experimenting further, 
uh, we can do that. So we'll kind of figure it out here based on uh, how much time, time we have left. So the kind of backstory to this is I was in a meeting with uh, some folks at work that are data scientists, and I will say that I really named this a mad scientist guide um, because I am not a data scientist. I come at um, AIML from more of a like hands-on hacker approach. I love open source software, and I love uh, the kind of like growing ecosystem there's like and we're in that like cambrian explosion type of phase with these tools there's lots of new open source software coming out all the time and it's really to me like extremely satisfying to play with uh, so i'm like all right cool bunch of like fresh software lots of it kind of like tip of main branch in github kind of a thing and I find that really exciting. Um, but yeah, I, so I was in this call and a lot of excitement from my side, especially on like networking side, which is kind of my forte, uh, talking to these data scientists and their take on generative AI was very balanced. You know, there's like the tech hype cycle. We're talking about data scientists that have been looking at this for an entire career. They're talking about all kinds of more classic AIML cases that have been used all over the place in the past and certainly um, like more like numerical models and say like high frequency trading and stuff like that. So they were really balanced about generative AI where me and my colleagues were like, this is amazing, this, let's use this for everything, this is so cool. Um, and somebody said, I wouldn't recommend that, you know, you have an LLM go and automatically configure your systems for you, um, which is good advice. <laughs> However, uh, it sounded sort of like a like a double dog bear, if you will, because I'm like, all right, I'm going to go now try to do this in, uh, in my own system. So this is kind of the experiment that I did, and I'm going to... Awesome. And we're on the air. Okay. Um, so this was kind of the thing that I was running into is I have users that have to write CNI configurations. And if you haven't seen one before, well, here it is. And it might look totally foreign to you. And that's okay. You actually don't have to totally understand it. And I might not go into total depth about this. But I kind of thought, hey, you know, this is like a problem in my area, and maybe there could be something that could assist with this. So I'm like, let's see about kind of trying to uh, automate this a little bit, trying to get, uh, to get an LLM to, to put this together. So what I started to do here was to uh, kind of Voltron a bunch of parts together to kind of glue something together to facilitate, facilitate this. Um, also, side notes here. I, I uh, had some uh, generative imagery. I'm going to flip back to one and just talk about it real quick. I really also love the uh, generative AI for image generation. This one used uh, stable diffusion with a technology called IP adapters, which will help you um, 
like copy a style and then instant ID, which will help you copy a like likeness of a person. Um, and then this one here was generated by Midjourney, but uh, as a like side tip, it used the term knolling in the prompt, which will get you kind of a like layout of things. Knolling is, uh, if you were to organize something like tools on your desk, you'd put things like at a right angle to the like workspace or the room that you're in. And uh, yeah, it turns out to like generate cool things. So yeah, instead of just having a bunch of uh, generated um, type of um, images, which you're seeing on lots of slide decks these days, I thought I would talk about it a little bit too. Awesome, I've got a swap in. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, this, these technologies that we're gonna use today, I'm gonna go over them um, uh, pretty quick. So first of all, uh, we're gonna use Olama today, which is a containerized way to spin up uh, LLM for inference. So in the generative AI space, there's kind of um, two phases to this technology. There's like a training, which would result in a model or potentially an extension to a model. And then there is inference, which is where you kind of get this like prediction of, of text out of it. So we can use Olama um, in this context for inference to you know, generate what we, what we want out of it. Um, so we're gonna use that, to, and everything here, totally open source, you can hit it up on GitHub if you wanna play around with it more and file an issue. A few of these things I'm involved in, some of these not as much. Like, I'm really just an Olama user and not a contributor, and same with Kind, so Kubernetes and Docker, as I mentioned, we we'll use that. And then we're gonna use some tools um, for CNI, so CNI itself is there and is kind of already present in the in Kubernetes when you spin it up with uh, with Kind. We're going to use Multis CNI. I'll talk about that a little bit more, but we're using it as sort of a like fail safe in this particular um, instance. And we're going to use Whereabouts, which is IPAM, so IP Address Management. Um, for um, CNI and Kubernetes. So we'll use that as well. And then last but not least, uh, we're also gonna use something called COCO, which is the container connector. Um, and it's just a, it's a sweet tool that a longtime colleague of mine, Tomofumi Hayashi, um, a beloved colleague of mine, um, had put together and happens to be kind of handy in here and we'll, we'll use it along with, uh, with Kind. So Multis itself, I won't get too deep into it, and I'll explain why, why we're using it, but basically the gist is um, Multis CNI allows us to get two interfaces in our pods and Kubernetes. So without Multis, you have your runtime and Kubernetes call CNI. It'll just call your you know, one configured CNI for for Kubernetes, and that will usually give you an ETH0 interface in your pod. With Multis CNI, it is a CNI multiplexer, and it will call multiple CNI plugins. In like a typical like industrial case for this, like we would use it in the telecom world for network isolation. So we could say, hey, I want an isolated network. I access it over this interface. But in our case today, we are using it as a sort of um, fail safe, a kind of a first do no harm. So what we're gonna do is we are going to generate CNI configurations for an additional interface in our pod. So this way, our primary network, our ETH0, is gonna always work, or should always work. And whatever we do on this secondary interface that is configured by a robot, um, we, we won't have mistakes that our, uh, that our LLM makes kind of mess up the core functionality of Kubernetes. So it'll allow us to experiment a bit more. 
We're also going to use a application that I wrote that is called RoboCNI config. And it kind of operates in, in two parts. And it is uh, sort of hacky, I guess I would say. So I really just like ripped it together to do this experiment. Um, it's available on GitHub. Feel free to grab it, build it, et cetera. When we get into the tutorial, I'll just have you download a binary probably. And pardon me. Um, it, so one part of RoboCNI config will allow you to query the LLM itself and to generate the CNI configs. And then there is another part of the application which will then actually generate those configs and then it will also access Kubernetes and create uh, resources. But the kind of prompt engineering concept that I am using with RoboCNI is what I've seen referred to as context scaffolding. So essentially, there's like a, a larger prompt that, that you're not seeing with RoboCNI that gives uh, more of a scaffold of the kind of output that we want. So there's a bunch of information about the kind of instructions that I want to give the, um, the large language model and also some information about uh, CNI. So you'll see on the slide like a snippet of that where I'm saying like, hey, the name field needs to be DNS1123 name format. Um, and how well it follows that is always up for grabs a little bit, but it really helps us because one thing is what you're gonna get as a return from these large language models, depending on the model, could be like extremely diverse. And I had a friend um, who I really respect in um, AIML space, who's somebody who's been into it for a long time, was the kind of person that would like, like one of their side projects is like training GANs, which is a like type of neural network on fractals and stuff like that, cool guy. And he said, when you prompt these LLMs, it's like rolling a million-sided die on a million-yard field. So try to like reduce the size here. So this is what we're trying to do with this, this context scaffolding. Um, this may go without saying, but don't try this in production. Um, if you're brave enough, well then try it in production. But I would overall say, don't. Um, and also, the part of RoboCNI config that will um, access Kubernetes calls kubectl from a shell. So if you are on a machine that has kubectl to production resources or some type of resources that you don't want it to have access to, um, please take that into consideration and don't bork your clusters. I, I honestly don't think that it will probably cause any major, major problems, but um, yeah, you're kind of handing the, the keys over to a robot here. Um, so essentially, if you're using Kind, which you probably will be, and you have the cube config for Kind, it shouldn't really be a big deal, but um, just keep it in mind. Um, Okay, so there's kind of some, like I mentioned, some choose your own adventure parts of this um, tutorial. And kind of the like big one that's sort of the like uh, great filter of the tutorial is if you have access to a GPU or not. Um, if you don't, I know most of us are on laptops here. I don't see anyone that's carted in like a desktop GPU rig for crypto mining or anything like that. So good chance that a lot of people don't have a GPU. That's totally okay. I have um, a cloud instance of a NVIDIA A100 up that I've got in the tutorial and we can use that. I'll go over the installation of Olama um, and it's in the materials, which I'll share with you here in a moment. Um, 
And you can install Olama without a GPU, but it will be using quote unquote CPU inference. So it'll be using your CPU to run the LLMs, which is just gonna be super slow, is basically what it comes down to. All right, so on to the tutorial. Um, I will give everybody a moment here. Um, yeah, there's a tiny URL if you need to type it into your browser. There's a QR code if you want to use your phone, or if you are super speedy fingers, you can just type the whole um, GitHub URL. Um, and of course, it is optional to go through the tutorial, but um, show of hands of people who think that they might go through the tutorial in real time. All right, great, awesome. So yeah, as we walk through this tutorial, um, what I will do is I will, um, I'll start going through it as well. And I will try not to speed run through it. Um, the, the tutorial itself, you can also go through, um, go through on your own time. But I want to try to give everybody a chance to, um, to keep, up, keep up with it. So as I go through, I'll probably try to pause a little bit and um, ask if people have kind of um, gotten to where I'm at. And additionally, um, feel free to raise your hand if you are stuck or want some help, and I will um, do my best. And the other thing is, too, um, I know at KubeCon we have a lot of Kubernetes experts around. So if you can help somebody who's sitting near you or elsewhere in the room, like um, one room classroom, so um, feel free to um, to uh, help, help your fellow person out, for sure. All right. Um, so let's get into it. All right. Um, let's see. I'll take a look at the screen and see. All right, it seems like we should hopefully be able to read it. And... Do a little little window management here. Uh, additionally, there is a um, ask in a recording of it as well. So if you want to watch the steps that I take, that is also available. Um, for some context here, I am going to um, be using a Fedora 40 system. So I've got a VM spun up. I'm actually running it in another location to um, kind of get a little bit of a bandwidth advantage as the as the presenter. So I've just kind of, um, S I'm going to SSH into this, this machine that I've got. So um, yeah, Fedora 40 going. And I already have um, Docker installed. Um, and do I have Git? It may be optional. We'll find out if I need it. I, I may not, um, as I mentioned on the README, um, potentially optional. So yeah, as I mentioned, um, bonus requirements, machine with a GPU, you can run Olama yourself. When I get to that point, I will, I'll run through, through the install. Um, but yeah, the, um, I guess first question is, given those requirements, um, are people general? Is there anyone who is not ready to start running through the tutorial that needs more time? All right, let's roll with it. Okay, so, oh yes. 
Um, so that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I wish I could say to you, yes, you can definitely use Podman, um, but I'm not sure about using kind with Podman. I think that, um, I think that Podman relies on um, a different um, container runtime. I think that, oh, go ahead. Um, Cool, yeah, thank you, all right. Um, to the rescue, um, this, this is Morgan. I know Morgan through work, and thank you for that one. That's, um, that's really cool. I, I didn't know that was a thing, and um, I am a Podman fan, um, and is, yeah, in Fedora, it's actually kind of weird to run Docker. You, you have to get it from a different repository, et cetera. Um, so, okay. First thing I'm gonna do is install Robo CNI config. I'm actually just gonna take this and toss it into a script. So, um, and just save that in a script. I'm gonna make it executable and go ahead and install it. So it'll download these binaries and then as the last thing it runs uh, the help from it so I can see it running it here and I've got the um, debug info, flags, flags to change my model, et cetera, so I can see I can execute um, this, this application. I also have steps to build it um, if you need to. So for example, if you're running on a Macintosh, you might have to build it yourself, sorry. Um, the binaries that I have are for um, uh, like Linux x86 system. So you may have to build it yourself. Otherwise, I apologize. I just live in kind of a Linuxy, Linuxy world. So um, absolutely my apologies. Um, So uh, yeah, I guess at this point, is there, I definitely see a number of Apple logos out there. Um, yes. You can have it anywhere, you can have it anywhere in your path. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Feel free to put it, put it wherever you like. Um, feel free to, yeah, to, to like make an independent directory for it and add it to your path or anything like that. You don't need to, Keep it, keep it forever, and use user van, user local van, et cetera. Great question. All right. So before we install Kind, we need to have Docker installed. If you don't have Docker installed, I gave the Fedora instruction steps. I happen to uh, have Docker running already, so I am going to um, move on to installing Kind. Let's see. All right. So this is a copy pasta from the um, Kind install. Um, which is just checking that I'm on the x86 uh, machine. And then if that exits positively, then what it does is it um, curls this script and executes it, which is sort of risky, but um, I, in general, but I trust, this is one I trust. So I am going to run that and let it go. Um, so once I have this, also similarly, I'm gonna make it executable. I am gonna move it to user local bin. You can have it wherever you want. If you already have kind, um, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Maybe you brought popcorn, and we'll see it go. Cool. Um, we're also gonna need kubectl itself. 
So I'm also going to uh, install kubectl. So again, curling a script and running it, live dangerously, and similarly make it executable and put it into somewhere in my path. And we'll give it a test. And it works, but of course no server is up, so it'll complain about that. But this is really what we're looking for here, is just that it's running. Um, all right. So, anyone need more time? I'm gonna, all right. I, it, sounds, it seems like people are keeping it up. I'm, Try to not try to not speed run it, but I th hopefully this is fairly um, straightforward. So this is um, an install of the container connector that I mentioned. Um, this cocoa itself is probably optional, but I will will use it, and it's just a little additional nicety, and you'll kind of see how I use it in a bit. But similarly. Um, in this case, I'm gonna download a binary of it, and I am going to make it executable, and I'm gonna give it a run to see that it runs, and in this case, I just wanna see that it actually executed, so it exited zero. Yes, please. Do you have to build it from that? And, and you know what? I do believe also you'll have to build it for a Mac, and um, if, if you want to, awesome. Um, if you don't, I believe that you can you can skip the cocoa steps. So um, that sh that should be optional. All right. Next, we are going to configure kind and spin up a cluster. I gave two paths here. There's um, easy mode, and then there is um, like a challenge mode. So the challenge mode actually disables the default CNI that comes with, um, with kind and installs a custom one. Uh, if you're going through this on your own later, you might want to try it. Um, it's going to make things a little bit more interesting, in part, I believe, because um, in, in the advanced mode, which I won't, won't do live, um, the flannel itself is going to have more of a reliance on the primary interface on a node. In kind, our nodes will be running as containers. And when we try to um, attach other CNI plugins to that primary interface in the node, um, it sometimes can cause, uh, cause issues. In my opinion, um, using something like flannel is more of a real world scenario. Uh, I think that there's a potential to, um, to learn more from it, but in my case, I am going to um, just, uh, just go with uh, the easy mode. So essentially what I'm gonna do here is just pipe in a config to um, kind create cluster, and we'll let that roll.
And any moment I should have a cluster, cool. So now I should be able to do cube cuddle, get um, nodes, there are no pods yet. And indeed, I have um, a number of nodes shown here. And we'd also notice that if I do a Docker PS, sorry that this is a little bit squished here, but we do have uh, Docker containers running for each of our um, each of our nodes here. So that I think kind of confirms that we have got a kind cluster that will work for us. So first thing that we're going to do here um, is with this cluster is kind of set up the CNI assets that we want to use. So the first thing I'm gonna do is install Multis CNI. So what this is doing here is taking um, a deployment for Multis and just doing a cube cut I'll create right from the URL. So let's do that and then I'm gonna use this command to um, wait for it to be ready. So um, while that's installing, the next step is that I'm gonna install the, um, all right, that's done, that's great, but I'm gonna install some reference CNI plugins. So let me just show you this repository quick, um, which is, um, the container networking slash plugins repository. So this is a set of what we call reference CNI plugins. Essentially what these reference CNI plugins do is that they give you a way to use some networking built-ins, especially for like virtual type of networking in Linux um, with CNI. And there is also um, cni.dev, um, which is the, the docs for, for CNI. And it has all kinds of documentation for these different plugins. So um, for example, bridge CNI, it creates a bridge and then it attaches your pod networking to a bridge um, Mac VLAN, which is a kind of um, virtual LAN with um, uh, using arbitrary Mac addresses. And you can go read all about this. However, the good thing is as we progress here is we are going to have an LLM generate these configurations for us, but we need to make sure that these are installed on our system. So. Similarly here, I'm gonna cube cuddle create from a, um, this is actually from the multi CNI repository and this is something that we use in our end-to-end -end test which installs um, the CNI plugins. It says that it's a Jinja 2 template but um, that's, it's just the technicality. It's not, nothing actually needs to be templated from it. So it's just YAML and I'll wait for that to get installed. All right, well, that was quick. Um, and then also, we are going to install whereabouts. So from the um, whereabouts repository, you'll notice that a number of these are part of this um, Kate's Network Plumbing WG, which is working group. So um, NPWG, which is a um, community working group that um, does a bunch of kind of CNI and Kubernetes type of integrations that I've been a member of for a long time. So if you run into any problems with any of these um, now or in the future, um, feel free to file issues on GitHub. The maintainers will eventually um, get to those and um, it's, it's a place where if you're interested in this stuff, you certainly can come join our meetings, all of that stuff. So yes, a number of tools from MySpace and I am gonna install this. this is, it's actually installing a number of things here, which is um, some custom resource definitions for whereabouts, as well as whereabouts 
itself, and then I'm just gonna wait for that to become ready. Cool. Um, great, so now if I do something like a uh, cube cut all get pods, um, da -da -da -da, let's try to make this semi-legible for a moment. Um, we can see there's a whole bunch of things running on our cluster now. So we had a daemon set which installed our CNI plugins. Um, we have the KindNet plugin itself, which is the default CNI plugin that um, comes with Kind. Um, we've got some of our internals. We've got Multis itself running. Uh, we have Whereabouts installed and running. And from there, we should be good to go. All right, so um, now that we've done all of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, take a look at the node itself. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna uh, docker exec into our first worker node, and I am going to um, list the contents of this directory here, which, expand this again. Um, so this is the CNI plugins that we've installed. So CNI, as I mentioned, it's a different API from Kubernetes. So it actually runs in a slightly different way. CNI plugins don't always run as containers and pods in Kubernetes. They're actually executed as binaries on the host. So in this directory, opt CNI bin, which is our kind of default CNI binary directory, we have a bunch of CNI plugins now installed. So um, stuff from the reference plugins like Bridge that I mentioned, IPVLAN, um, Multis itself. Um, this says Multis shim because there are exceptions to this rule. Um, Multis itself runs in what we call a thick plugin architecture. So it has a shim executable that runs on disk, and then it has pods that also run. So it's like the shim talks to Multis running in a pod. Um, so some more um, full-featured CNI plugins you'll see run that way. Um, and this is mostly just for your edification, otherwise um, not um, so, um, so big of a deal here to, to understand it, but we have, we've installed a bunch, a bunch of stuff here. All right, now we're just gonna kind of validate this, this environment. Um, so what we're gonna do is I am going to create this custom resource, um, which is we call a network attachment definition. So as we progress, we're also gonna have robo CNI config uh, go and create these network attachment definitions. So they're a way to express that I'd like to have a particular pod um, use an attachment to a particular network. So what we have in a network attachment definition is a CNI configuration um, that's, that's packaged in this custom resource. So Multis will read that, and this should just be copy and paste style just for validation. So I'm gonna create this net attach def, and then I can do cube cuddle get net attach def, and I'll see this Mac VLAN conf that I created. So um, then I can create a pod that references that, and additionally, RoboCNI config will later all kind of auto-magically be doing this for you. But essentially, to say I want to attach to this network, I'm gonna have an annotation that says, um, hey, I want to reference this name of a network attachment definition that I created. So if I go and create this pod, Let's give me a little more real estate for a minute. Um, 
And I can do qcuddle get pods. If I accidentally start typing oc get pods, that's just because I use OpenShift a lot and I do that all the time. So just forewarned, it's forearmed. And I can see that it's already running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kubectl exec into the pod. Um, and what I'm going to do is just run the IPA command, which shows me some IP information about the pod. We can see here that we have, so our environment is generally working in this case because I can see I have a loopback interface. I have an E0, which in the Multis world we call a primary network. And then I have an interface named Net1, which is an additional interface. In this case, um, created using Mac VLAN reference CNI plugin. And it is um, by the specification that we created over here. So I kind of said here, without going into the depths of this, is I want to use Mac VLAN. Um, I want to use this kind of IP address management called host local, and I want an IP address um, in this particular range. So I did get assigned the first IP address in that range. So this is um, good news for this environment. So um, that is good news. So just to be tidy, I'm going to. Um, delete um, sample pod, and I also am going to um, delete my net attached f. Um, and I'm good. All right, and I've got a clean environment. All right, so that is our general CNI config. Is there anyone that needs more time or has questions, et cetera? On step five, whenever you're doing the installation of the reference CNI plugin, yep. there's a daemon set that's going to be created called install hyphen CNI hyphen plugin. Yes. So if you're on a Mac, you need to modify that. You should not need you to. You have to change it from AMD64 to ARM64 and then you're deployed. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, that's good news. So uh, anyone who didn't hear that is, yeah, so it um, there it says, um, AMD uh, 64, and you need to change it to ARM 64. Did I get that right, Morgan? Yep. Thank you. Once, once that is done, I'll do it. This is the best thing ever that um, Morgan came here to help out on some of these, um, and not even by plan. So really, um, highly appreciate that hugely. Awesome. All right, I am going to um, carry on to the next step which, um, as I mentioned, is likely optional. You, you can probably skip this step should you need to, but is um, I am going to, I guess, to simulate more or less of a, uh, an environment that I'd be used to um, for using um, multiple, um, uh, multiple, so, this is sort of a turtles all the way down thing. So we're going to create multiple interfaces in our pods, right? And we're going to uh, soon here, we're going to automatically generate the configurations for those. But additionally, I'm going to create an additional interface on the host. So the host in this case is running in a container. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to docker exec into my kind worker, and I'm going to run IPA, and I'm going to see that I have two interfaces on my worker, one of which is my loopback interface, and the other one is my ETH0. What I am going to do next is I am going to use Coco to add an additional interface. What Coco is doing here behind the scenes is it's using a Linux networking technology, in fact, now I wonder if this will even work on a Macintosh at all, um, called a VETH. Um, so that's like a virtual Ethernet. Um, and what we're doing here is we're essentially going to take our two worker nodes and we are going to add an interface 
that is connected between the two of those. So I'm going to go ahead and just wholesale copy this block, which is essentially what it's doing is it's saying I want to get the process ID of these um, um, worker containers, and then I'm going to run Coco and I'm going to connect these two. So if I wholesale copy this, and it tells me that it's creating a VEATH and it's done. Now I can go ahead and exec back into this yet again. And now I'm gonna see that I have a loopback, an ETH0, and an ETH1. In this case, it doesn't actually have any IP addressing associated with it. And in this particular case, it doesn't matter, we don't need it. Um, so that is, um, that is what I'm going to do. So from here, next, we begin the Olama install. So as I mentioned, if you don't have a GPU, you might want to skip this or find a way to get one in the future and try it out. I personally think it's extremely satisfying to run your own LLM and not necessarily rely on something like a chat GPT or a co-pilot. I mean, I love the open source world because you do kind of get to um, be the master of your own domain. You get to kind of uh, make the rules. Um, so I highly suggest that you try it at some time. Um, I'm going to roll through the install here quick, and I have in my environment um, another machine that has um, a GPU. Oops, hold on. Do I have password off? Oh, I do. I should probably turn that off, but um, here we go. NVIDIA SMI. So in this environment, I do already have um, a GPU running. It's a 3090 in my home lab. And I am just gonna run through this install pretty quick. Um, so yeah, this step is optional. Um, here in a moment, I'm gonna give you, and you may already see it on the um, tutorial steps, that there is uh, um, some access information for uh, LLM that I have running in a cloud using Olama, and you can just connect to it and use it for the time in this tutorial. Um, I may leave it running for an hour or two after this, but uh, I am paying for it out of pocket by the, by the moment. Not that it's particularly expensive, but I will turn it off this afternoon. Um, cool, so um, again, just running a install script, and then I am going to, um, in a screen, um, start this, and I'm going to say listen on all IP addresses. Oh boy, um, I already have some stuff running apparently, so that's great. Um, let me just kill these and and. Uh, so yeah, uh, this was from running it previously, and now I can actually run it for real. So screen ls, and then um, I am, uh, and then great, and. Yeah, great. I am going to start Olama, and all right, and away it goes. So it lets me know it's using my 3090. I've got almost 24 gigs of VRAM. That's what I want to see. And then I can say that I want to um, serve this. Oh, nope, I want to run it. So I'm going to start another screen and I am going to um, run it. And in this case, I am specifying a, 
Oh boy. Ah, wrong name there. Um, so yeah, when I run the olama run command, I'm specifying a model that I want to, to run here. And if you go to um, the olama.com slash library, you'll actually see a bunch of different large language model models that you can that you can run. So here I'm running one that's called code Gemma. And then in a moment, um, we are actually going to run. Um, we're going to access the one I have running in a cloud that's running a llama 3.1. Um, and once I have this running, I can just use it um, arbitrarily, like why is the sky blue um, is a kind of typical one that you might see as a test, or generate a CNI configuration. Um, and um, that's actually not a valid CNI configuration, which is why it's important that um, we'll, we'll use robo CNI config. And it'll do a much better job once I give it some context to run in. So that is an Olama install. Um, now, let, we're about to get we're about to get to the good part. Okay, cool. So back to uh, my machine where I've got kind running. Um, there we go. Good news. So I, for convenience, have already updated this README with the connection information for the cloud LLM that I've got going. And I've exported some variables here so that I could make it a little easier to um, copy and paste um, these commands. And so I'm going to run robo CNI config for the first time in this demo. And the way that it works is that I specify which host I'm going to use, the model I'm going to use, which is, as I mentioned, Llama 3.1. Um, the 7 billion parameters edition, um, which port it's running on. And then last but not least, in quotes here, is our hint. So we can give uh, RoboCNI a hint about what we would like uh, to generate for a CNI config. So I am going to say I want a CNI configuration for Mac VLAN um, named after a uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of something fun. Um, uh, lesser known impressionist painter. And it'll take a moment to think about it, and then it's going to spit out one named after Berth Morisot, which is unfortunate that that's a lesser known impressionist because Berth is actually a super good impressionist. So. Um, I don't necessarily agree with you, but it, at a glance, um, it does look like a legitimate um, CNI configuration for me. I can see that it's got the correct type here. And then also, um, it's going to use whereabouts for our IPAM. Um, and I have, so actually, just like taking a like quick peek at. Um, this kind of uh, context scaffold that uh, RoboCNI config uses. Um, I've got a bunch of um, instructions in here. And I think that I put somewhere in here a uh, like bit of a cheat that says, so I've got like examples to use, um, some explanations copy and pasted from the docs. But I have somewhere in here to say, um, if you don't specify it, use whereabouts, um, which is kind of a cheat code here, because whereabouts is very good at um, assigning dynamic IP addresses across hosts. Um, some of the tools that come with the reference CNI plugins aren't quite as good as that. Um, so OK, now I have a number of things working in my favor at this point. So the first thing in our favor is I've got the kind environment. I've got the CNI tools that I need. I've tested those. 
I also have Robo CNI config running, and I have tested that it can work. So now I am on to the point where what I am going to do is I am going to run uh, another command, which is called loop robo CNI. This is the command that will shell out to kubectl and will, uh, one, generate these CNI configurations based on a number of um, hints. So in a moment here, I'm going to create this prompt file. Um, with these different hints, and it will randomly pick a hint from here, generate a CNI configuration, and then what it'll do is it will create a network attachment definition custom resource with the generated CNI configuration. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna spin up two pods, and then it's gonna execute a ping from one pod to the next to see if there's actually network connectivity there. And then it'll tell me yes or no, it worked or it didn't work, and it'll also tell me at what point in the process it failed. So let me first um, go ahead and edit this. So I'm gonna temp prompts.txt, and I'm gonna paste these um, hints in there. And I will then run this loop robo CNI command. So let's go ahead and run that. And all right, so the first thing it does is it actually um, introspects a node, which is essentially what I told it to do is to um, exec into a node with kubectl debug node, and then it does IPA. It gets information about um, what interfaces are available on the node. It adds that to the prompt scaffold, and then it additionally um, will look at the routes on the host, so it'll do IP route, and then it'll put that into the prompt scaffold as well. So I'm trying to give it like as much information about our hosts as possible. Um, so let's look at the results here and what um, Loop, Robosy, and I did. So um, we're running once. Um, it ran this hint was saying um, I want to uh, have a Mac VLAN with a master with some information about whereabouts, and then I said name it after a significant landmark, and it produced this network attachment definition, which it named after Mount Everest, apparently, and it uses whereabouts and picked up on the range that we wanted. And then what it wound up doing was it spun up two pods, a left pod and a right pod, and then it figured out which um, uh, IP address it had, which does not look correct, but the, um, but the ping actually succeeded. Um, and it is, a, it is a bit random, but let's tr now try running that. Now that I've got it run once, I'm gonna run, do the same thing, but I'm gonna do five different runs. Actually, let's do this. Um, does it leave the pods? I'm actually gonna take a look at a pod just for the heck of it. So I'm gonna um, uh, exec into test pod left, um, and then I'm just gonna run IPA and see what happened. So I did picked up on the wrong IP address, which I'm a little bit disappointed about, but um, it, did, it did configure it. And then let's actually just look at the right pod. So if I look at the right pod, and then I have this address for the right pod. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of check my work here, and I'm gonna go into the left pod. Um, and I'm gonna ping for a count of five, the right pod. And it did actually, it was 
there is connectivity between those. So, okay, good. I just wanted to check the work. And then I am going to now run this same command, but with five runs. And let's see how well it does um, in five runs. So again, it'll introspect the nodes again, and then it'll pick a random hint, and it will generate a CNI config based on that. Cool, it'll spin up some pods. And it did succeed to get a ping across both of those, so I'll just let this keep running. Um, while this runs, um, is how many people were able to uh, get RoboCNI to uh, make a query? Okay, good, awesome, excellent. All right, that makes me happy. Two out of two succeeded on to run three. Uh, I, so, if you're interested, I also wrote a blog article about my like first experiment with this. It's on my blog at dougbtv.com. Um, it's a little old, so you might have to scroll down. There's other like funky experiments on there too, which you might want to look at as well. Um, but I had I let this run over a like weekend, and I did it 5,000 times. And I had a success rate of 95%, um, which another engineer that I work with who I highly respect was like, 95% means, in engineering terms, it's inherently broken. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, fair enough. But I'm like, when a human does it, if like my human success rate of creating CNI configs is probably not a 95%. Um, so I was actually um, kind of excited um, that that happened. And I was also like, I could build other tooling to try to detect the failure, try again. Like, it's like if I'm trying to roll like 95 or less on a 100-sided die, like in two rolls, I got a pretty good chance of, um, pretty good chance of uh, hitting it. Um, so we're on the fifth run here, and I've had, I'm gonna have 80% success rate at least. Let's see what happens on the last, last run here. Drum roll, please. Hooray, five runs, five successes. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, that's the whole of the, the tutorial that I've got for you. And thanks for the patience to uh, chill out and roll through the whole thing with me. Um, appreciate it. I know it's like, uh, you know, definitely um, take some patience and certainly everybody's environment may be a little different. Um, but that being said, um, does anyone want to follow up with any questions or thoughts or, or anything else? I'd be happy to chat about this or anything else or any related technology for sure. All good? Okay, cool. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I hope you um, all have an excellent rest of your KubeCon for sure. So thanks. And yeah, stop and say hi to me anytime for sure. Thank you.